Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 67 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe on your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week included Marvel's Avengers, Tell Me Why Chapter 2, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, NBA 2K21, and WRC 9 FIA World Rally Championship. The games coming out this week include Necromunda Underhive Wars, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, Akunoka Madness, Party Hard 2, The Sims 4 Star Wars Journey to Betsu, The Sims 4 Plus Star Wars Bundle, Car X Drift Racing Online, The Outer Worlds Peril on Gorgon, Wintermore Tactics Club, Hotshot Racing, Tin and Kuna, Vampire the Masquerade Shadows of New York, Tell Me Why Chapter 3, Minoria, Borderlands 3, Psycho Krieg, and the Fantastic Fuster Cluck, and Hidden Through Time, The Legends of Japan. An update on games coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. The following games can be played now. Crusader Kings 3 on PC, Jackbox Party Pack 4 on console, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on console and PC, Tell Me Why Chapter 2 on console and PC, Two Who Luna Knights on console and PC, and World War Z on PC. You can play Star Renegades on PC on September 8th, The Sky of 4 Complete Plus on PC on September 10th, Hotshot Racing for console on September 10th, Tell Me Why Chapter 3 on console and PC on September 10th, and Destiny 2 Shadowkeep and Forsaken on console coming soon. Now onto last week's biggest news stories and we have 8 to cover this week. Number 1. Xbox seemingly now openly admitting Xbox Series S exists before it's announced, Joe Scrubbles at IGN writes. Xbox Series S is seemingly now mentioned on publicly available Xbox products despite not having been officially announced yet. The long-rumored console, which will apparently take the form of a lower-priced, lower-performance variant of the Xbox Series X, has never been officially announced or named by Microsoft, but multiple mentions of the console and its internal codename Lockhart have been found. Now those buying Microsoft products have found mention of Xbox Series X and their goods as shown by this Xbox controller, which arrived with a Game Pass voucher that specifically mentions Xbox Series X and S, the same console name formatting found on alleged Xbox Series S controller packaging last month. It remains to be seen when Xbox will formally announce the all but confirmed console, although rumors point to announcement this month. If the company is now printing publicly facing materials with mention of the Xbox Series S, that seems increasingly likely. Not too much more to say on the stories like this and the Xbox Series S as we seem to cover them every week. Just announced the console already, Xbox. Let's see what it can do and what the cost of it is, more importantly. Number two, free to play online games still aren't really free on Xbox One. Ethan Gotcha Kotaku writes Yesterday, Rocket League developer Psyonix announced that when the game goes free to play later this year, you'll no longer need a paid subscription to play it on online, on PS4, or Switch. Unfortunately, that won't be the case on Xbox One. Rocket League will instead be the latest in a long line of free-to-play online games that aren't truly free on Microsoft's consoles. Just as with Fortnite, Dauntless, and Apex Legends, you'll be able to download and install the game for free, but will still need to pay Microsoft for a monthly Xbox Live subscription in order to actually play it. Sony and Nintendo also require monthly subscriptions to play games online, but make an exception for free-to-play games. The summer release of Ubisoft's free-to-play Battle Royale Hyperscape is another example. It's free-to-play online on PS4, but almost $10 a month on Xbox One. While this doesn't necessarily impact people who play a ton of games and therefore already subscribe to things like Xbox Live Gold or Game Pass Ultimate, people routinely post on the Xbox support forums and related subreddits asking if they can play, quote, free games like Destiny 2 for, well, free. The answer is actually no. It doesn't help that Microsoft recently mothballed its $60 annual Xbox Live Gold memberships. Now, if you want to subscribe, you have to do it in a pricier one or three-month increments, meaning $100 to $120 a year. It's also still not clear why this is the case. Microsoft did not respond to a request for comment. When Kotaku asked Psyonix why Rocket League will require Xbox Live but not PS Plus or Switch Online, a spokesperson simply responded, quote, it's based on platform policies, end quote. This has been a low-key ongoing problem in the Xbox ecosystem, and I wanted to highlight this story this week as I'm not sure if everyone is aware of this issue. It really doesn't make sense why Xbox is continuing to enforce this for, quote, free-to-play games. It seems antithetical to their mission with this next gen and Xbox as a whole right now, given they continue to promote Xbox as the place to play games where you want, when you want, with the friends that you want. Here's to hoping that they reverse course on this and make truly games that are free to play, free to play. 
Number 3. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X free to existing owners. Sharif Syed at VG247 writes, To no one's surprise, there's going to be a next-gen version of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. CD Projekt Red has announced today that The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is being re-released on PS5 and Xbox Series X in 2021. The improved version will be visually enhanced and feature upgrades such as ray tracing and faster loading times. This is the complete edition of the game so it includes both the Blood and Wine and the Hearts of Stone expansions. The next gen edition will be available as a standalone purchase for new players on PS5 and Xbox Series X, but owners of the game on PS4 and Xbox One will get the upgrade for free. Interestingly, the upgraded version is also coming to PC and will be similarly free to existing owners. It's not clear yet if you need to own the complete edition as opposed to just the base game to be eligible for the upgrade. As this was arguably one of the best and biggest games of this generation I had to include it, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt didn't do anything for me as I'm just not a big fan of that era, but I cannot wait to see what they do with Cyberpunk 2077, an absolute day one buy. Number 4. Immortals Phoenix Rising release date and screenshots seemingly leak. Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes, According to the Microsoft Store, Ubisoft's Immortals Phoenix Rising, previously known as Gods and Monsters, will be released on December 3rd, 2020, at least on Xbox One. This Microsoft Store listing also reveals new screenshots, which you can see below, and further details for this upcoming grand mythological adventure. In Immortals Phoenix Rising, players will become Phoenix, a new winged demigod who is on a quest to save the Greek gods. Phoenix will be able to wield the powers of gods like Achilles' sword and Daedalus' wings to fight enemies and solve puzzles. Iconic mythological beasts, including Cyclops and Medusa, will try to stop you on your journey, and you will have to face them in combat, both in air and on the ground. Phoenix will also have access to self-guided arrows, telekinesis, and more, all of which will help her on her journey in this stylized open world across seven unique regions, each inspired by the gods. Immortals Phoenix Rising will also take advantage of smart delivery, meaning if you purchase it on Xbox One, you will get the Series X version when it becomes available. Furthermore, those who wish to pre-order will gain access to a bonus quest called A Tale of Fire and Lightning. Immortals Phoenix Rising was revealed as Gods and Monsters at E3 2019 and was originally set to be released on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Stadia on February 25th, 2020. I gotta say, as far as game names go, this has got to be one of the worst ones I've heard in a very long time. Not sure given the art style and direction this game seems to be going in why they even changed it to something as generic as Immortals Phoenix Rising, which I think is funny considering gods and monsters are two of the most basic words you can say, but to me it really depicted the game way more. Not really on my radar, but maybe we'll see more at the Ubisoft Forward event coming up in September. Number 5. Harmonix's music mixing game Fuser gets November release date. Matt Wales at Eurogamer writes, Rock Band and Dance Central developer Harmonix's intriguing music mixing game Fuser will be coming to Xbox One, PS4, Switch, and PC on November 10th. Fuser, which styles itself as a non-stop digital music festival, delivers an evolution of the mixing mechanics introduced in Harmonix's 2017 card game Drop Mix, giving players access to over 100 songs from artists including Sia, Imagine Dragons, 50 Cent, The Clash, Amy Winehouse, Lady Gaga, and Billie Eilish that can be mixed and matched from different set lists in order to complete their musical creations. Songs are broken down into drum, bass, lead instrument, and vocal parts, and those elements can be placed into four available slots, with players able to create their own loops and tweak the likes of key and tempo along the way. It's even possible to share creations online. The end result is part performance game, part creative tool featuring three different modes of play. There's a campaign which challenges players to keep up with crowd requests and mission goals as they build their mix. Alongside a freestyle mode and multiplayer, in the latter case players are able to compete or collaborate with up to four players. I gotta say I'm really intrigued about this game and the early previews of this were very high. I can't wait to see what the reviews are on this, and I might have to pick it up given I was a huge Rock Band and Guitar Hero fan back in the day. Number 6. No Man's Sky developer working on huge ambitious new game. Joe Scrabbles at IGN writes, No Man's Sky developer Hello Games has a portion of its team working on a huge ambitious new project. In an interview with Polygon Studio founder Sean Murray explained that Hello Games is now made up of 26 people, three have been working on the new Hello Games short, The Last Campfire, with the remaining 23 split between working on new updates for No Man's Sky and a brand new project which Murray calls, quote, a huge ambitious game like No Man's Sky, end quote. He also made clear that this isn't a sequel. Practically nothing is known about the new game, but Halo Games has confirmed to IGN that it is very early in development. Murray is seemingly unsure about how much to discuss the game in advance after No Man's Sky controversial release and eventual redemption. No Man's Sky was one of the greatest comeback stories in video game history, given that the game was such a disappointment at launch, and they seemed to put all the right things in the game way after. I didn't get into the game, but the promise initially had me so hoping it would be what it was, and unfortunately, it wasn't. 
I feel like Sean Murray isn't doing himself any favors by already saying it's a huge ambitious new game, even if the game is so very far away. Let's just hope that they keep expectations in check for whatever this new project is. Number 7, Dead by Daylight is getting a free PS5 and Xbox Series X update and a graphical overhaul. Taylor Lyles at The Verge writes, Dead by Daylight is coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X this year and not just as a technicality. Developer Behavior Interactive says the next-gen console versions will not only run at 4K resolution and 60 frames per second, but it's aiming to create a remastered edition of the game as well. The PS5 and Series X ports won't be the only ones to receive a graphical update, Behavior promises. Every version of the game will get updated animations, lighting, visual effects, modeling, and textures with the intent to improve the immersion tenfold, making the environments as realistic as a scary, disturbing nightmare, the company says. Behavior Interactive is also promising that players who purchase the game on current gen will receive a free next-gen upgrade, and it sounds like you may even get to choose which next-gen copy you want. Quote, current players who own the game decide to buy a next-gen console will experience a seamless transition, getting Dead by Daylight for free on their new platform of choice while keeping all progression, end quote. Another one of the big games this generation that I just have never even tried, so for all the fans out there, enjoy your free copies and updated visuals this year. And number 8, AT&T no longer looking to sell Warner Bros. Interactive Gaming Division, Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes. After reports stating that AT&T was looking to sell Warner Bros. Interactive, which includes studios like Rocksteady, NetherRealm, and WB Montreal, it has now removed its gaming division from the list of non-core assets up for sale. As reported by Bloomberg, AT&T has decided, quote, it was too valuable to unload during its effort to pay down debt and streamline, according to people familiar with the situation, end quote. In June, CNBC reported that Warner Bros. Interactive had attracted interest from many companies, a list that includes Microsoft, EA, Activision, and Take-Two, and that this potential sale could have reaped $4 billion for AT&T. However, it now sees the business's growth potential. Albeit probably good for the gaming industry, it would have been amazing to see Microsoft acquire Warner Bros. Interactive and all the studios and IP that came with it. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and unfortunately this one isn't that fun. Over the past few weeks, there have been a lot of accessories being announced to work with the next-gen consoles. I wanted to highlight here that the Xbox Series X will not have an optical audio port, which allows a lot of headsets to connect to the console. I know myself, I have the Astro A50 wireless headset, and I love it. However, it's not currently planned to be compatible with the Series X. Astro has gone on record to say that they are working on Microsoft for a solution at launch, and I hope that to be the case so I don't have to purchase another headset. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I've been playing Tell Me Why Chapter 1 and 2. Credit to Don't Nod, Famous for Life is Strange. I've loved those games and I'm loving what I'm playing so far. I've also jumped into Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake, and my god, what a beautiful and awesome nostalgia trip that is. My name is Brandon Rosie. You can follow me on Xbox at Brosa93. I hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.